Good day everyone! In this video, I will share to you my next next 30 days here in the United States as a new immigrant because it took me a total of 60 days for me to finally get settled here in the US. So I will share to you my experience, tips, things that you should do, and things I should have done even before coming here to the US. So stay tuned and much to the end. I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. So for the first topic, it will be the U.S. driver's license. Like I said, in order for things to get better and cheaper for you, you need to have your U.S. driver's license. Meaning, you have to take the written test first. And the written test here is definitely not the same back in the Philippines. It's quite hard, honestly. You really have to study for it. A uh, good thing is they have a module online or some PDF that you can download. Like for me, here in Kentucky, it has like 70 pages, so you can download those things and read them even before coming here to the U.S. Also, in some of the state's DMV website, they have some modules or sample uh, test questions that you can use. Like for me, I had to answer like six modules, like 25 items each, before actually taking the test. And while answering those questions, I actually failed multiple times because it was something new. And I didn't study before taking those modules. The good thing here is, even though you fail the exam, it will just take you one week, then you can take the exam again. And it's also free. But because of COVID, some things might be different. And it differs from state to state and county to county. Uh, it might be difficult for you to get some schedules. Before it's like a first come first serve basis. Now you might have to call to get a booking or reservation for a slot. So it's definitely harder now as compared last time, just because of COVID, as usual. Tip for the DMV written questions. You can go to YouTube and type DMV written test or uh, written examination. There you can see similar or exactly the same questions that you're going to have to take during the written exam. And they can give you good examples and visuals, which is really, really helpful, honestly. So try doing that. I'm sure you're going to learn something. By the way, different states have different rules for driving. They might be similar, but they're not 100% the same. Some states has some specific rules that you can do, which you can do in a different particular state. I told you before that I was scared of taking the actual driving test, particularly for the parallel parking. And also, I never driven a automatic car before or practiced using it. So for me, I had to practice two weeks after I had my car. Then I finally decided taking the actual driving test. But I didn't know that the written test and the actual driving test will be done on a separate base, on a first come per serve basis. I should have taken the written test earlier, honestly. Anyway, two weeks later, I finally had the courage to take the written test and the driving test. For the written test, it was quite easy for me since I already know the questions. So I made the mistake like six mistakes, I think. Then when I proceeded to the counter to submit my uh, past test result and to get my temporary license, the usual DMB staff who told us before that you have to take the written and the driving test was not there. There were different people who were stations and they were contemplating if I actually need to take the actual driving test still because I already have the international driver's license and of course the Philippine license which is one of the countries that has a reciprocity when it comes to the US driver's license. So they decided that I don't have to take the written test. So for me, it's like, okay, yeah, sure. So I was definitely happy, like really happy because I don't have to go to that actual driving test anymore. So they process everything. I had my picture taken and then I have to pay for the fee for the US driver's license, which I'm really willing to pay at that moment just to get my license before they change their mind. So for me, I really felt I was lucky. Because the one foreigner who came before me, or the one Asian or Filipina who came before me, she was required to take the written test as well as the actual driving test, even though she had the Philippine license as well as the international license. So she was still required to do those things. She's actually the one who guided us on what to do during the DMV actual test. And it was actually the same for my wife and for her. So I was fortunate enough that I don't have to take the test. Wherein I should not have waited for two weeks anymore just to do this test especially for the written test. So there's really no consistency and it differs from state to state, county to county. So it's really best to just be prepared to just have everything ready, just in case. Someone asked me these questions that someone was able to get a license here in Kentucky even without having the international license. Like I said, there's no consistency. But if you look at their webpage, they require you to have like international license together with your uh, Philippine license. So it's really up to you if you really want to gamble or not. My best tip for you is to prepare for the possibility of having international driver's license. 
So what you can do is leave an authorization letter back home in the Philippines for someone to process your international license just in case you need it. Then, when you arrive here in the U.S. and they insist that you have to have your U.S. driver's license in order for you to drive, then ask that someone to process them for you. Then ask your representative to process the international license back in the Philippines and send it to you here in the U.S. It will take like three to five days for everything to be processed. It's that easy, really. Because I know having an international license is quite expensive. So if you don't have the cash, you can do this as a backup plan for now. Like I said, different states have different rules. Like for my colleague, he came here in North Carolina. He had everything, the U.S. driver's license, the international driver's license. Unfortunately, the DMV county that told them, you can drive with those things. You really have to have your U.S. driver's license. If you're planning to drive immediately when you arrive here in the United States, you might need your international license. But if you're not planning to drive and you want to wait for your social security number, then process the switching of the country's license to the U.S. license, then you might not need the international license anymore. But again, like I said, there's no consistency. Update with regards to the DMA actual driving test. It's quite harder to get a schedule now, really. You really have to call to be put in the list for you to be able to take your actual driving test. So like for one of my colleagues here, it took her like one to two months before she actually finally get a chance to have her actual driving test uh, done. So you really have to be prepared for this, just in case. You really have to do this particular test as well. Then, just after receiving my U.S. driver's license, the next thing I did was to switch my U.S. car insurance. Why? Because my initial car insurance was really, really, really expensive, like I said. So what I did was I went to a local car insurance office. And from $450, it went down to $130. Also, including those $130 was a renter's insurance for my apartment, which is like $5. So I was having like a bundle, so it was cheaper. So imagine from $450 down to $130. That's how big the difference is between having a U.S. driver's license versus having just an international license. So it's really best to convert your driver's license as soon as you have your social security number. Since I switched to a car insurance, I didn't have to pay the $450 only have to pay two weeks worth of it which was like 225 dollars so they do it like a prorated rate here so how did i switch my car insurance after i arrived in the office i called my previous insurance through the phone so i asked my previous car insurance to cancel their, my subscription with them after 12 midnight because i'm gonna have a new car insurance which will activate after 12 midnight and they asked me what's the reason for switching i told them i have a better offer that's how easy it is so once you tell them, they will just send you an email or confirmation letter, and then that's it. As easy as one, two, three, really. So recap some tips. Study before coming here to the U.S. Read the PDF for your actual DMV state, and really try to get the important things from those pages. Then practice your driving skills before coming here to the U.S. just in case. You can watch my video to have an idea of how the DMV actual driving test done here in the U.S. FYI. The DMV actual driving test differs from state to state, place to place. So you still have to do some of your other researches. I will make a video with regards to having a license here in the US, as well as some tips and information that you really need in order to prepare, like the parallel parking, like what to do in order for you to have a better chance of passing, and how to prepare. So please make sure to click the subscribe button. Then the next topic is my wife's social security number. For her, her social security number did not come together with mine. It came separately. Uh, mine came within like three weeks for her. It came on the fourth week. But when the letter arrived finally on her hands, states there that her social security number is still being processed. So her actual social security number arrived two months after. So it took her that long. That's why in my previous video, I told you to be prepared financially and prepare for the worst. Because this happens often. Like for my previous colleague, it took him like two months also before receiving her, her or his social security number. So prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Then the next topic will be about the phone. Here in the U.S., you need to set up your voice mailbox. Because here in the U.S., when people can call you, they will leave you a voicemail most of the time. So if ever you're waiting for some instructions coming from specific companies, so it's best to have it set up. Here in the U.S., you will be receiving a lot of calls. Calls coming from car insurance, like agents, like health insurance, 
like uh, weight loss uh, programs and everything and also scammers so please be wary about these things because some people will really try to get information from you through the phone or through messages or voicemails so please never give your social security number or bank account or any details to anyone that you do not know especially through the phone because they might be scammers they might be just fishing for informations uh, that might not be advantageous for you or that might be dangerous for you honestly so please be ready okay the next thing we did here to set out is to teach my wife how to drive driving in the u.s is really easy especially if you're living in an area like mine like more of a rural area but if you're living in a city area it's more difficult but most of the places here in the u.s are quite similar to mine like a wide road uh, there's no much traffic so it's a good place to start driving honestly so in order for me to teach her how to drive i asked her to get the uh, driver's permit which was easy enough for her at first my wife was really running like 30 to 40 miles per hour and she was really really scared with those kind of speed but later on after a month she's even driving to like 90 90 miles per hour so it's equivalent to like 120 or 110 kilometers per hour back home so it was really fast but my wife won't even notice it because Driving here in the U.S., especially on interstates or highway, people drive so fast that you won't even notice that you're driving as fast as well. And it's easier to drive, especially on highway, especially if you have the cruise control. Rain is a really cool feature for cars here because you don't really have to step on the gas pedal most of the time. You just need to click some button on your uh, steering wheel and it locks on it. So it makes it easy, especially on long drives. I'll show you a video about it next time. So make sure to click the subscribe button. Then within one month, my wife was confident enough to get the actual driving test and wherein she passed, like really ace. The instructor even shook my hand after the driving test and told me that I did a good job in teaching her. I I can my wife is also like a first time driver, like really first time. So if you guys are really worried about driving, don't be. You'll eventually learn it here. If me and my wife can do it, I'm sure you guys can. The next is we proceed with my work. So for the orientation, there was two weeks scheduled for me. For the first week, what we did was mostly like orientation, uh, especially in the classroom, for the computer, for the stuff they have, the equipments they have. So it was quite fun and easy. Okay. Then since I'm scheduled for the night, on the second week, I did the night rotation. Then the mentor I had was a Filipino, which was RJ. So he taught me during those weeks. Then for the third and fourth week, what we did was like a body-body system. So during the orientation stage, what I realized is it's easier here as compared back home or back in Singapore. The workload is much, much lighter and it's really easy. And there's more respect for our nurses here. It's easier to take care of them as compared back home in the Philippines because people here are more understanding. Then when I received my first paycheck here in the US, I was disappointed really disappointed when we were doing the computation for the monthly budget we realized that we were just like making few hundred dollars not much as compared back home in singapore so we were really a bit disappointed about it so we had to adjust some of our plans we really didn't expect that this is the only thing we could earn per month so we kind of ruined our plans here in the u.s honestly this is one of the reasons why I wanted to blog about these things because I never expected such thing. I was expecting when I arrived here, I would really have a good amount of savings. So that's the thing about agency versus direct hire. So honestly, I will definitely suggest going for direct hire. Important lesson here, don't compute based on the hourly rate you have. Make sure to key in about the expenses here also in your area, especially like the rent, the apartment, the insurance, car insurance, health insurance, and all that. So you can properly compute everything. Because like for me, it was too late. So I only realized when I got here. It's really best to do your research before actually committing. Then the next thing I have to decide during this period is to select an insurance policy. Insurance policy based on the option that my agency gave us. So it was not much and it was quite expensive. Which I never expected because I was thinking it will be similar to our health insurance back home in the Philippines or in Singapore wherein it's covered by the hospital so it's like free and there's like specific amount that will be covered but here no you have to pay monthly so that's one of the downers about it and what I realize is the price is different from the one if you go with the direct hospitals or direct agencies the insurance is quite different as compared to doing with the agencies so that's one other thing you have to ask your agency about how much is your healthcare insurance policies per month like ask them in advance so you will be able to compute everything ahead also like i said in my video here um, insurance will only kick in 
30 days after the start of your work. So meaning most likely you might not have an insurance within the 60 days you arrive here in the US. So you definitely have to be careful because healthcare in the US is really expensive if you don't have a health insurance policy. Like one of my colleagues here in the US, when she came in, I think on her like third week or fourth week during her work, she got sick and she had to go to the emergency room and she did like a minor surgery. And since the insurance didn't kick in yet or is not yet in effectivity, she owes like $70,000 US dollars. So until now, she's paying for it. So that's one of the things you really have to be careful about. For those tourists coming here to the US, I know they're required to have uh, insurance. And I think they're just paying a bit cheap for it. So I believe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I think if you can get some, it's best to get one, especially within the 60 day period. So for my next video, I'm planning to do like a cost of living uh, for those going to Lexington or to Louisville, Kentucky. And also I'm planning to do like a COVID series uh, because I'm sure most of you will be going to COVID units or might be taking care of COVID unit patients. So it's best to give you something like a heads up so you know what will happen to you guys. Hope you learned something from my video. That's it for my first 60 days here in the United States. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please comment down below. Click on the subscribe button and share to your friends and relatives. Again, I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you. God bless. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.